Independent Senator Lydia Thorpe will give an address to the National Press Club today. Matt Cunningham will be following this speech and joins me now. Matt, what Lydia Thorpe has to say uh, is always or often accompanies fireworks. So what's your mail? Well, according to an interview she's given uh, this morning on Radio National, she says she'll be telling some hard truths when it comes to Aboriginal affairs in this country. Now, as you say, we know Lydia Thorpe uh, is someone who often courts controversy. She's going to, we believe, speak about the impacts of colonisation on Aboriginal people. She's going to talk about the rates of child removal of Aboriginal children in this country, some 23,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children who have been removed from their families and also talk about the impact of incarceration and the high rates of incarceration uh, on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Uh, she will describe the voice as a powerless tool, uh, Laura, that is part of a colonial system. That's why uh, she is opposing uh, the voice to parliament that's going to be the subject of a referendum later this year. But interestingly, she has also said uh, and is likely to say again that she won't be actively campaigning against the voice. She is on the no side, uh, but you won't find her out there uh, campaigning for Australians to vote against this proposal. Yeah, well, look, we see this big split between the no camp and those who think it goes too far, those who say it doesn't go far enough. You did a whole documentary on this. What's the background to the split? Where do you see this ending up? Well, this really goes all the way back to the Constitutional Convention that was held at Yalara at the foot of Uluru back in 2017. Now, when those delegates met at Uluru, uh, when they came up with uh, the Uluru Statement from the Heart, when that decision was made, there was actually quite a bit of controversy. There were people uh, who walked out of that meeting, people including Lydia Thorpe and others, who believed that uh, what had been uh, come up with, the Uluru Statement from the Heart, that proposal, uh, was not what they wanted. They wanted to see you know, something more concrete, something that went further. It's interesting if we look at the history of this, that the Uluru Statement from the Heart was actually a, a compromise that was made. It was an attempt to find middle ground. And, you know, having interviewed Noel Pearson at length uh, for the documentary uh, that I did here on Sky News, it's also been running on the Voice Channel, you, you can see that he's somewhat frustrated that uh, he was trying to give ground to the Conservatives when he came up with the Uluru Statement from the Heart. There'd been an earlier proposal uh, that uh, constitutional recognition would also include a non-discrimination act in the constitution. He knew that conservatives wouldn't buy that, so he tried to compromise and come up with a voice. But now we're seeing that at some level that's uh, upset people on both sides of the debate. So you can probably understand why he's a little bit agitated that he's being asked to compromise again when he probably sees that, um, and people in the yes camp will see that what they're offering at the moment is already uh, a level of compromise. Yep. So, Matt... <sighs> We expect this in October. The polls don't look good. The feeling doesn't feel great. It's kind of doomed at this point, isn't it? Well, you'd have to be worried if you were part of the Yes campaign. The poll numbers, I think, are terrible for them. We've seen support um, for The Voice go from anywhere in the, the mid to high 60s uh, earlier this year. Uh, now, in some polls, it's falling, um, you know, to the mid 40s and even below 40% in this state. You'd have to say that Queensland is lost. You'd have to say that Western Australia is in real trouble. Uh, and one poll uh, just a week or so ago had Yes behind in uh, all six states, remembering... Uh, that uh, they will not only have to win an overall majority, but they will have to win four of the six states for this referendum mm. to be successful. In, in some ways, I think, Laura, that they've been undone um, by those who were supporting them. You know, you were seeing these corporations, um, you know, you were seeing uh, some of these bigger companies really lend their support to the voice. And I wonder whether that, uh, you know, is putting some people off when they see, you know, banks or they see, you know, an airline like Qantas or whatever come out and, and support the voice you know, I think people who are feeling like they're struggling with the cost of living or struggling with other things just, just think, well, that's, you know, that, that's just going to put me off this proposal more than it's going to attract me to vote for it. And you're obviously seeing, um, you know, the opposition leader and people in the no campaign sort of latch on to those sort of issues and that support that's coming from those corporations uh, and then, then frame this as a sort of elitist proposal that uh, is a long way from the concerns of people in remote and regional Australia. Yeah. You're spot on, Matt. Thanks so much. Speak to you soon.